Uh, is there a KD4 lingering? Uh, yo, that's funny. I'm like, I told Nas, I was like, watch as soon as it drops, we're going to get asked about KD4. I'm <laughs> like, I don't know, bro. We just working. And Nas, obviously, he doing you know everything he doing. And yeah. I'm, I'm producing still for a lot of other people. So we'll see what happens. But we just enjoying KD3 right now. Rap Life Review Time. Nadesca Low Ebro. We're here with y'all every week talking about the things going on in the culture. So big albums this week, or let's call them projects, because Glorilla dropped. She's like, that was like an EP, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Some of those records was already out. I think she made an added four or five joints on there. Three of those records, Blessed, Tomorrow, and FNF. Yep. And then the rest were, were new records. With some new joints, yeah. so big up to her. Also, KD3 from Nas, which I think we're all enjoying also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're going to have Hit Boy on the program yeah. to talk to him about KD3. What you, would you say earlier? Top five Nas project? I wanted to plant that idea. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I, look, I'm afflicted often with recent history bias. Okay. When albums drop, based on what's going on around that time period mm -hmm. where you are in your life, mm -hmm. what other hip hop is available, mm -hmm. it hits you a certain way, right? Like what it means to you. I think, you know, as an old head, seeing somebody like Nas, who I've been in the game, I've been in the game as long as Nas been rapping. Pretty much synonymous with y'all Yeah, careers. we were yeah. almost the same age. Yeah. So seeing him put up Numbers. numbers like this. Yeah. And by numbers, I don't mean sales. I mean actual music and convo and Versus lyrics delivery. and putting yeah. points on the board and wins yeah. on the board in the culture, right? Because I'm from a time where the culture wasn't predicated on how many you sold. Mm -hmm. It was predicated by the quality of the music and what the culture said, this is dope or this is not dope, mm -hmm. right? So even fast forward to now, like when you go look back at Illmatic, I don't think it went platinum the first no. week it was out or something like no, that. He, he was never a big a sales time. number either. He's like He never sold big numbers right. regardless. So. But people that know, if you know, you know, right. when somebody's doing storytelling over the right production right. and the rhyming and emceeing on a project and it's concise like this one is, um, people who love real rap are f***ing with this album. And I, we have to give credit, to, you know, and we're going to talk to him in a minute, <clears throat> we have to give credit to Hip Boy for... Him being so young and being able to orchestrate uh, a, a seasoned soul like Nas. Let's bring in Hit Boy. Hit Boy, what's going on, man? I got one of my co-producers of the album. With hey, me. there he is. Yeah, what's your what's your little boy's name? D three. So he just got his first production credit at two years old. On the <laughs> Nas album. Hey, congrats. He might get a Grammy now. That'd be amazing. Yo, Hit. Um, you know everybody's been talking about this album. Um, I'm sure you've been seeing the responses and, you know, the critiques. What's your what's your favorite thing about how people feel about this album? The natural progression of how, you know, every album we've dropped, people have, you know, said it's gotten better. So that's just that just gives me inspiration as a musician alone, you know, just like, wow, we can keep, you know, progressing the sound and just like exploring and just like they, they react to it the way we feel like they're going to react to it. It's like it's ill. We uh we talked Friday, uh Friday night when the album dropped, and you told me something very particular. You were like, you didn't feel like you went hard enough on the production. And me and Ebro and the desk were just sitting here talking about how great the beats were. Why do you feel like you didn't go hard enough? Man, that was kind of just like some last minute jitters, man. Like I was feeling it the whole time. I'm like, man, we on we we right on track, we doing it, but I just kind of like this was the most um anticipation we had for an album. Like every other album was like you know, like a week or maybe two weeks max of even people having noticed that it was coming. This one, he he, he uh, mentioned KD3 on Magic, which came out last December. So we had a whole almost year of like people constantly hit me up. Like every everything I would post on my story, I could be posting with my son. It would be Nas fans in there like, yo, where's KD3? <laughs> so it's like I just had a different level of pressure on me this time. So uh, I got to talk, Hit Boy, uh, to you about... Um some of your production decisions, which I, I found uh, very pleasing to the ear. I was Whoa. very excited about uh, how you decided to use samples, transitioning from beat to beat within the same record. You did it. You produce a lot of records like you was DJing. Tell me, tell me why you decided to take that approach versus what, you know, seems to be more popular today where Cats is changing the beat within songs and they just jumping from beat into a whole nother beat. I feel like that's the sound I've been kind of 
curating and I feel like I've been in the lead up for a minute. I put a project out in like 2014 and I was switching the beat up and just keeping it consistent. I feel like that's that's like kind of a, a normal thing now. But I feel like a lot of people, like you said, they just, you know, they'll just load up another beat like me. I'm trying to actually make like make it progress with the song and sound like it's the exact same song, but it's just a progression. You know, that's how music was back in the day. I appreciate you for that, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, when Ebro spoke to Nas for King's Disease 2, he said, you know, on the first album, you guys are still learning each other. And obviously it's a progression on this project. It sounds like he's more at ease than we've heard him in like a decade. And same for you on the beat. So we actually want to play you a little clip and hear your response. Check this out. A lot of times I walk in the studio and his headphones is on. He's like, yo, check this out. It's something he's already working on. And as soon as I hear it, 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 it's like, that's the one. He's like my Quincy, you know what I mean? He's um he's pushing himself. If I was to work with Hit Boy on the next thing I do, I think that we might do something that was is is going to be magical. And and I think we learned so much. The first album we were just learning each other. This in the middle of it we said we got to do another one. We got to finish this one first, but we're going to have to do another one. We knew. I think if we do an, another one, um I think it's I can't, I'm excited about that idea. Um, but, you know, we're celebrating this one now. So I'm still grateful to to the reception I got from from this one. Mm. That was Nas right after King's Disease 2 dropped. Planted the seeds already for oh, Michael that, and that, Quincy. Well, no, he <laughs> had, but clearly, clearly talking about magic, too. Hey, listen, bro, that's that Nostradamus, man. <laughs> like, it's like he be in the future with it, just... Even in the conversation, yeah, yeah. and and that's kind of like the the beauty of what's going on. Like man, like every record we make, we might sit and talk for two, three hours, and the conversation just becomes it kind of just manifests itself. And that's what that exactly was. Again, just like it's a natural progression, man. We just got more comfortable with each other. And honestly, man, a lot of these beats that y'all hearing, I sent them to other people. They they didn't get it, you know what I'm saying? And Nas, uh, he's open. Like, he's uh, he's open the building, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these, not a lot of them, but some of these songs wasn't even mapped out that way. Like, we kind of just really built on them and just, like, made it a progression. And that's one thing that I feel like Nas empowers me to be able to be the producer that I can be, that I should be, versus just sending a pack of beats and, okay, I'm over here doing my thing and let's just hope you make the album. Like, that's kind of what I get from everybody else. Not everybody, but Nas is just like, just gave me a just an open canvas to just be like the best producer I can be. What are some of your favorites when you go to the album? And tell us tell us why. I'm going to say Beef um, off top, just Beef like because that's one of them. I gave you power, you yeah. know, just like real locked in concept man like the rewind joint like I, and it was funny i had to almost fight nas to keep that on the album like mm. he was like man i don't know because it might not be on i gave you power level or whatever but then the way people tapping in and it's you know just translating is ill then i'm gonna say mike and quincy man mm -hmm. i think that's mike definitely quincy, one of the best man. i've ever made that i've ever been a part of and it's just ill um Man, bro, uh, reminisce. Mary J. Blige sample, like reminisce. my family, oh, my mom. Reminisce. You, so did right. you did that right. You did that right. People good. that I really love, like played that song over and over as I was growing up. So, just I know I had to do that justice. And for us to even transition to the drill part, I, I got you. <laughs> for it to even transition to the drill part, you know what I'm saying, and still keep the integrity of the sample, I think that's ill. I, I know that album just came out. Um, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself. And you know, we have our conversations, but uh, is there a KD4 lingering? Uh, yo, that's funny. I'm like, I told Nas, I was like, watch as soon as it drops, we're going to get asked about KD4. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, bro. We just working and Nas, obviously, he doing, you know, everything he doing. And yeah. I'm, I'm producing still for a lot of other people, so we'll see what happens, but we just enjoying KD3 right now. Congratulations, should, man. Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, Hit Boy, you know, one thing we didn't miss on this album was the features. The first two projects definitely had a few on this one. I didn't miss it at all, and I feel like Nas is so introspective on this project that that wasn't needed. Was that a decision from Jump, or as you were recording, it just didn't feel like it made sense? Man, honestly, it was it was once we got deeper into the album because I definitely was thinking and, and conceptualizing on just like who could be a part of it, and even I even pulled up some 
features that I had just like in my computer from different artists and we tried stuff but nothing really connected on the level of what we was just doing solo man and this is I believe now his first album ever with no features so that's just a ill thing in itself. Um, You could definitely hear like this album is to the point which I think is also why it's uh, being heralded so and celebrated right it's very to the point um and and it's not it's no fillers you know what i mean it gets right to it even some of the tracks is two minutes 30 seconds which i think you know as somebody who has been watching how people consume music that causes people to go back and want to play it again because they like yo wait it's over yeah. i gotta run that back <laughs> so that's always right. a good strategy especially with Nas. you know he gonna say a lot man he real poetic and just like things deeper than the average, you know, I would say rapper. And um, that's just what's ill about it, man. You're going to take in more information the more you listen to it. What did you, what was your reaction when you heard him spit the line about texting <laughs> Hove saying this ain't over? Certain moments in the studio, bro, where <clears throat> we just, you know, we honestly, bro, we really trying to just like impress ourselves so it's like times when he'll say something and i'll just look at him and we had that look like nah you didn't just say that bro like what is going on like so that was one of them for sure i was like you know that's gonna go real viral like soon that's as it's going dry. crazy <laughs> that, yeah that was the first line i heard or saw from the album and everybody was like yo does he still want to spar do you feel like he was still throwing little jabs little shots at home yeah, not man, like them dudes, they, they homies man they, they not homies. in a bad way not in a bad yeah, way competitive just competitive rap, rap way. way it's a yeah exactly it's just like a play on the and just like you know paying homage to that moment you know they had a real probably one of the biggest beefs of all time in hip-hop so it's like it's just you know poking fun and just having fun with it. Man. Hey like, man, that'll get that'll get, that, that, get young hey, that'll get young that, back that, outside. That'll get whole Hove young. Get back outside. That'll have him that call up of, Guru and pull up a beat hey, or man, something. What like. I love, what I love, bro, is that <clears throat> it's being pushed further. Like you know, it's like we always kind of give our legends or just like black artists in general a ceiling, and it's like nah, bro, we can still make quality. We can still make mm -hmm. progressive music for what we do and just, like, still be ill, man. Like, it's like, these beats ain't like, you know, a lot of people say, like, it got the nostalgic 90s feel, but somehow it feels updated. So, mm. you know, that's just an ill thing for um, I, I I planted the seed earlier about this being questioning, is this a top five Nas album all time? Just to plant the seed for people who maybe, who maybe haven't listened to it in that context. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree yeah. or disagree, it'll cause people to go and, and go play something and, and then play this against it yeah. play a classic and play, play this, this against, against it just to <laughs> I, think, I just seen you tweeted that and that's that's all hip-hop conversation is welcome man there's a lot of combo <laughs> going on today actually yeah nah it's great but i also think i also think Nas doing this kind of work with you at this stage of his career counts double you know what man, i'm saying like crazy. i think crazy. i think you see a you see a veteran pull up to the court and put up, you know, 50, 50 on yeah. you. The Hove doing a four minute verse, Nas doing four albums in two years. Like, okay, yeah, we can, everybody can still get down and just exactly. do their thing. Don't have to put a cap or no type of ceiling on it. This is this is the I still got it era. Hip hop is pretty much the the youngest genre, so it's like we got time to progress into what it's supposed to be. Yeah. There you go. Hit boy, salute, bro. Go enjoy man, your time with your son. Yo, man, thank your son for his contributions to this <laughs> classic. Appreciate all y'all, man, for real. Switching gears, though, um, let's get to the comment. <laughs> oh, boy. You know what I'm saying? Since there's people low, they was coming for you I last see it, week. But you I already see knew. It. You expected Listen, this. Listen, it's, it's, I expect y'all to hate me, but I feel godly today, so nothing. Is that why you wore all white? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Because I knew the comments. We finally had some clarity. Tried to like, you needed to ascend above. I, that's all I got to do. That's, Listen. I'm just hovering over the bull. So Let's some of these it. comments did share my confusion about what exactly you want from Drake. But I'll just start with the hate. Okay, start with the hate. Um, Drake definitely took Lowe's girl. Now he's tight. Um, you did look watery eyed. I ain't going to hold you. No. Drake is notorious for yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard yeah. some stories behind the scene. Has this happened to you? What? You can be honest with no, us. I, for, okay. No? Uh, oh, don't. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Drake did not take my girl. Okay. Drake has never known any of my girls. Smart. That's smart. Okay. All right. Um, you try to keep it that way, too. <laughs> you should keep it. You should, <laughs> you you should keep, it that way. keep it as such. Uh, Lo just wants Drake to rap about gender identity and world hunger. Um, but more specifically, some people. <laughs> Here's one. When you're the biggest artist of today, how much more can you grow? What happened to Prince and Madonna when they're at their peak? They tried to grow by switching to club music. That was the beginning of their downfall. I mean, he did give us a club album. A club album. Give us a that's, club that's album. his attempt at growth. But, uh, you know, but, but 
to our point and to our guest, Hip Boy, right? Mm. We're looking at Nas. Nas is what, 51, 52? Yeah, something like that. And I feel like he's, there's an energy that you, you, you don't see from older artists like this. And I feel like Drake, being 35, still has a lot to talk about, still has a lot of new flows to create, still has a lot of new delivery to, to, to give us. And I just feel like sometimes it's not a lazy part. It's just, bro, like I know it's there. I do not believe we've seen him challenge himself to the point where it's like, oh, that, that looks uncomfortable for him. Push on his last release said, I'm only going to work with Kanye and Pharrell. Right. My whole album, that's the whole album. That's the challenge. That's the focus, right. Right? right? Nas recently has been challenging himself by only locking in with Hit Boy. Right. What would that look like for Drake? And it doesn't have to be those individuals. Yes. Right? Yeah. But in a way, is locking in with 21 Savage challenging him in a way, right? Like, because I, I I really enjoy the project. I do too. Right? Yeah. But you said it fell short for you. That's what this all started by. Yeah, of course. You know, hear him on the album, it's, 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 it's reminiscent of everything we've already heard. Mm -hmm. And while it's still good, it's like, oh, okay, I knew I was going to get that. I have Fuck. one more comment for you then and one more question. This is the last one. I think we shouldn't force artists to grow but be in the moment of their art. If you look too much into what we expect for them, we don't uh, appreciate what we have now. I guess my question Who for you that, is... Who said that, by the way? We should shout that person. Uh, that David person? Cody. Okay. Thank you David, for that, David. Yeah, um, my question is, like, do you feel like we need that from Drake now. If we're talking about someone like Nas, who's in his 50s, or yeah. someone like Jay, they're older, they've lived a lot more life. Yeah. 35 is still relatively young, especially in yeah, rapper yeah. years, like the life they live. Could we get that or expect that from Drake in five years from now or 10 I would, years? I would like, love, you need it now. I would love it to have that 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 era of Drake. I would love to see what, he, what, you know, what Nas and Hove are doing. I would love to see him do that. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that we need to miss him. We missed Nas. We missed Hov. So should he take a break? Because he's been so consistent. I would love if Drake just fell back for a minute bro, and I need did to, more TV yeah, and film yeah, like, and like do something else. He's I need earned the, the right I need to explore the, yeah, that. Yeah, he's earned the right to take a break. He's earned. He's put out what three albums in the last two years. Yo, we need to miss you. We don't miss you. Every time we wake up, it's something new. All right, so we've gotten to the bottom of this. You just want him to take a break. Maybe that's it. Okay. And and I go to I go to was it the Scorpion album? Is that what it was? Scorpion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it was a double yeah, joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was side A that had the no ID production on it. And it was side B that had like the Michael Jackson sample yeah, Michael and some Jackson. other yeah. things. Yeah. Side B, people liked, but it was like, I didn't need this. Thank you for it. Side A though, it was like could have been a classic Drake album if he just gave us that. But once again, he didn't want to just give you that. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And I think as that he should, as a creative, you have every right, every privilege to say, I'm doing this because it suits me well. That's right. But then when you have the hip hop heads, the grandpa hip hop Twitter, we're like, yo, that's cool. We're tired of that. Get to the shits. Cause I know you can get to the shits. And if I didn't give a, f I wouldn't acknowledge it. I wouldn't clamor for it. I wouldn't beg and plead and kick and scream because I know it's there. So anybody that's listening to this show right now, and you think I'm a Drake hater, this is me saying you can do better. Drake can do better. I know he can do better. We know he can do better. That's why I kick and scream every Wednesday. Yo, that's the Rap Life Review from the desk and low. I'm Ebro. Make sure you subscribe below. Leave your comments. We love all your feedback. Um, and uh, make sure you turn in the Rap Life Radio. It's on Fridays at 1 o'clock Eastern. And make sure you add the Rap Life playlist uh, so when we get all the new heat uploaded, you get all the music as soon as it drops. Thanks for watching this episode of the Rap Life Review. If you enjoyed what you saw, just show us that it's real. Hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment so we can hit you back on next week's episode.